Are you continuing with Italia High School? Please continue. I am really liking this story. I was wondering if you had decided whether or not you are continuing with HHS. Can we please have more? Really? I'm not convinced. Continue, yes, please. I'm say kind of getting into the story too, even if there's pedophiles It's so in fun it. to hear you get it in the voices and I'm liking it a bit too much. Continue. Please continue the story. I'm asking you to please, please continue the series. I've watched all the chapters. Please continue the series. Please continue the series. Please continue the story. 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 Please Gilbert entered to the apartment. He was back from his morning jog. Yes, he wasn't the soccer coach and had that hot body for nothing. True, he wasn't as strict as Ludwig, but still he had his own regimen. He was about to take a shower when he heard his cell phone. By the kinky tone that sounded, he knew who it was before answering. <laughs> what exactly is a kinky tone? Sup, Francis? Gil, did you sleep well? You bet. I can't believe Tony or didn't want to join us last night. And did Ludwig say something about you not sleeping at home? Gilbert and Francis met some lonely ladies the night before at the club and decided to escort them home, but they kind of lost sense of time. A subtle way to call what they did. Oh, I hope these girls weren't underage like everyone else is in this fanfic. You're kidding? I don't think he even remembered he had a brother that brat has got him. Oh, ho, 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 ho. It was about time. I wonder when you'll find somebody, Gilbo. No way. I'm too awesome just to be a fun person. Why should I deny the rest of the world my awesomeness? Moreover, I don't think you want to be left alone in your night affairs. Wait a minute, aren't Prussia and France boinking at this point? Even you have a point there. I think it's time for you to stop being the big caring brother and start worrying about yourself. What is that supposed to mean? Oh, you know what I mean. Always bothering your brother, but still looking forward for his happiness. Shut up, oh! Um, I'm not supposed to say this word in America. Shut up, Irish cigarette. I know you too well, but anyway, we do have a plan for tonight. And don't tell me you can't because Antonio already said he had plans. But I am sure it means a day with his Sundere kid. It's natural he turned you down, idiot. And so will I. Today after the finals and Romano happens to be one of my boys. Oh, I forgot. And be careful of not saying that in front of Antonio, he certainly wouldn't find it funny. It was you who twisted my words, Perv. Besides, Tonio isn't the violent type. I don't know, mon ami. Don't you remember his rebel phase when he was a teen? Even you were afraid of him at that time. We cannot know for sure that he is totally over it. Fine, then. I'll watch my mouth. And you don't try to rape his boyfriend, okay? So, are you coming to the game? I don't think so. You know I have never been fond of sports. We better get here tomorrow to make you feel better about your defeat. Idiot. With that, Gilbert mm. finished the conversation. He then noticed his brother had been standing near him the whole time. He felt fear. Had the youngest German heard about him not sleeping at home last night? He was the older brother but Ludwig managed to make him feel guilty about his behavior sometimes. Morning, Lord. Ludwig stood there in front of him, looking nervous, trying to say something. Gilbert mistake this for a bad omen. There is no commas in this. I would like to talk, Bruda, but today is a big game and I have to get ready. The albinos surrounded his brother and rushed to the shower. Ludwig didn't even try to stop him. He just didn't know how to tell his brother that his vacation was ruined and it was all his fault. 
Tweeka! The small boy heard somebody calling him and turned to be surprised by hugs. We didn't see you in a while. Feliciano tearfully patted his friend on the back. How nice we found you here. Elisabetta stopped hugging the Japanese boy who was a little pink. You've been ditching your friends for your boyfriend, Kiku? What a dick! Th th thanks, I'm glad to see you two again as well. But Feliciano, why are you here? I thought you didn't like sports. Well, I don't, but I pretend I was playing today. And I came to support him and I invited Elisabetta. Fortunately, she could come. Elizabeth smiled and asked Kiku, What about you? Obviously, he's there to support his bay. I am Virai. Suddenly, Heracles appeared behind the Japanese. <laughs> the Japan- Kiku, I have to go warm up now, but I'll see you after the game, okay? Heracles noticed his boyfriend blushing, even more than usual. He then realized they had company. Oh, I didn't see you. Hi, Elisabetta, Feliciano. Feliciano answered first. Hello, Heracles. Good luck in the game. Yes, we'll be cheering you up, right, Kiku? Elisabetta said as she put an arm around her friend. Kiku didn't look at either of them, but nod. Fine, then. I'll see you later. The brown-haired boy left as the coach was calling him. Elisabetta frowned. That idiot. I still find it unbelievable that he had made it this far in the tournament with that bird brain of his. Feliciano and Kiku laughed at the joke about Gilbert. Kiku, sorry for the question, but didn't you get in trouble at home for what happened with Heracles? Elisabetta showed true concern on her face, and the small boy took this for honest worry. Where my brother did get mad at first, but Heracles came to my house and asked for apologies, and also he gave my big brother a present, and with that I think everything was forgotten. Feliciano raised an eyebrow. Really? What did he give him? Elisabetta looked just as puzzled. Kiku took a deep breath before answering. A kitty. The two friends look at each other. What? Kiku felt awkward at trying to explain his brother's weak side, where he thought it was cute, so he forgot about everything and the problem. Oh, oh. So that's how Heracles worked his way into that side of the family. Neat. Elisabetta and Feliciano couldn't believe it, but decided not going further in the topic. Trio searched for some seats, but they found that there were no more left until Feliciano heard somebody calling him. Bailey, over here! Antonio was sitting on a great spot, and it seemed there were some free sits next to him. Hello, Mr. Fernandez. Bailey, I told you that. He then noticed Bailey's friends behind him. Doesn't matter. Hola, chicos. Elisabetta heard everything clearly, but preferred not to say anything. Hi, Mr. Fernandez. How lucky you got these seats, but weren't you waiting for somebody? Antonio wasn't a good liar, but his charm always got him out of trouble. Well, I was, but then I got the message from them, and it seems that they couldn't make it. I was going to let somebody else sit when I saw you looking for a place, guys. Thank you so much, sir, Kiku said. Yep, no problem. As Antonio said this, he sent a message to Francis and Ludwig to tell them that they could no longer had a place for the game. He could always compensate them later. While Elizabeth and Kiku offered to bring them some snacks, Feli and Antonio used the chance to chat. Roma is going to be so happy you came. You think so? He actually didn't want me to come. But I really wanted to see him play. Gilbert told me he's very good. And that he enjoys seeing him on shorts. But I punched him for that comment. Gilbert, what the fuck? Oh, yes, he is. He told you he didn't want you here because he's shy. But I think he'll be very happy to see you. Antonio blinked. Were this brothers aware of how much they knew each other? Nothing escaped them. He smiled at the Italian and messed a little his hair. There are no commas in this story. No, no, there was one, but it was after a question mark. I hope so, Fede. Now, I think you want to be with him at the end of the game, right? Yes, why? Well, while me and my friends are distracted with Heracles, you should use the chance to take my brother away. 
What, what does that mean, Feliciano? Are you literally giving him permission to take your brother's virginity? Sounds puppy for me, gracias. Elisabetta and Kiku came back just in time for the match to start. During the first half, Heracles and Romano proved to be the team stars. Of course they were. It's like they were in their element. Not the always angry brunette or the sleepy boy. For Antonio, seeing his Romano like this, had to be a gift from heaven. Not a frown on the boy's face. And he could see how much the Italian was enjoying his time in the field. And besides, he recognized Romano was talented. He couldn't help but notice how appealing the boy looked, and it wasn't just him who thought this way. By the screaming of the girls around him, he could see that his Roma was very popular. Oh. And Kiku was having a great time as well. This wasn't the first time he saw Heracles playing. He had a whole collection of pictures of the Greek. He had also brought his camera today. <laughs> but, okay, I, I like this addition. This is good. I like this. But he had to be more discreet this time as he had company. <laughs> this is actually quite in character. I like this. It were now the last 15 minutes of the match, and the score was 1-1. And Antonio could see the exasperation in Gilbert's face. The other team wasn't as good as his, but they had been blocking Romano and Heracles, not allowing them to get close to the goal. Hitalia High School asked for a timeout, and as the team gathered, Gilbert started shouting at them the last instructions. The boys ran back to their positions before the whistle. Faley was excited. He truly had faith in his brother for the matter on Gilbert. He turned to Antonio to see his expression and found him anxious, biting his lower lip. Calm down, everything will be fine. Antonio came out of his thoughts to see Feliciano. Even if he loses, I know you'll find another way to cheer him up. Antonio looked at Faley and smiled. You bet, Faley. Oh my! Elizabeth's shout drew the, the attention of both men back to the game. Roma had the ball and was skillfully dodging his opponents. With that exclamation, I thought something gay was about to happen. And as he reached the goal, the spectators grew more excited. Gilbert was holding his breath. One of the members of the other team was following Romano dangerously close. The only thing he could do was make Romano fall, but Heracles prevented it. And as a result, both boys fell on the grass. At the same time, Romano scored the winning goal! Everybody screamed for joy! Romano even took his shirt off, Antonio grateful for this, and waved it as his teammates joined him to celebrate. They then ran to Heracles and lifted him. Even the boy was injured, he was just as happy as his friends. Shirtless party time, let's go! Antonio and the kids next to him ran to the field to congratulate their friends. Faley took Elisabetta by the hand and followed Kiku to see Heracles, just as promised, while Antonio searched for Romano. Heracles was sitting on the bench, the doctor checking on his ankle. Kiku approached him. Heracles, are you all right? Heracles looked up at Kiku. Nothing serious. You sure? You can't drive back home like this. I caught a cab or Kiku. Yes? Won't you congratulate me? Kiku blushed. Well, of course, but I wanted to know if you... The brunette planted a kiss on Kiku, who gave him a sheepish smile. C Congratulations, Heracles. Feliciano cleared his throat, and Elisabetta was giggling. Kiku totally forgot about his friends. Great game, Heracles, and congratulations! Thanks, Feliciano. Elisabetta offered to take the boy home since he couldn't drive in his condition, but when they were in the parking lot, she looked at Feli with worry. Feli, we forgot about your brother! The Italian couldn't help but smile. He'll be fine, he has the car, and I think he's going to celebrate with somebody else anyway. Oh, ho, 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 celebrate, you say? Antonio couldn't find Romano in the crowd of teenagers. He noticed that Feliciano and his friends were already gone, so he could have more privacy when he met Romano. If he ever did so, he finally spotted the Italian, a group of girls around him. He didn't like this, and he hated it as he came closer and heard the girls openly flirting with the brunette, who was enjoying it too much for Antonio's taste. How was it possible that with the silly girls he was 
all warm and charming, and every time he saw the Spaniard, he just got all rude and aggressive. He wasn't going to allow it. He walked straight to where Romano was standing and, moving some of the girls aside, he fetched Romano by the shoulder. The Italian was about to yell when he noticed the Spanish. The Spanish! But he saw something in his face he didn't like. Was that a frown? A frown poorly hidden by a false smile. Antonio looked scary to him, something he had never experienced before. The taller man dragged him out of the group with some protests from the admirers, many insults from Romano. When they were alone in an more private place, Romano pulled away from Antonio. What the hell is wrong with you, bastard? Antonio was still serious, making Romano feel uncomfortable. Well, aren't you going to tell me what's your fucking problem? Well, I don't know, Roma. Perhaps it was that I came here to see the game, which you didn't invite me, and found you flirting with other girls that you thought I wasn't here. Romano stood there, mouth fully opened. Wait, are you jealous, bastard? Antonio was taken aback by this. He didn't realize he was jealous until now. He hadn't felt jealous about anyone before. He was too confident in himself, but with Romano it was different. At the most slight provocation, he will fight for him. Romano didn't wait for an answer from the Spaniard and instead kept talking. Because of that, the kids, I don't see why I should care since you yourself enjoy flirting with the same girls all the time. Or do you think it is fun to hear them all day? Oh, Mr. Carriedo was so handsome! Mr. Carriedo was so charming! And that just happens to be because you're so much of an ass to let them get close to you when I should be the only one to do that. Romano covered his mouth with both of his hands and flushed furiously. He had just made the most close to a declaration of love. Antonio was as well speechless and slightly red. He didn't see that one coming. He then recovered and smiled widely. He walked closer to Romano. Don't get away from me, bastard. I, I didn't mean it. But Antonio ignored the younger boy and hugged him strongly. I'm sorry, Romano. I'm an idiot. Romano stopped fighting and raised his head to look at Antonio. Yes, I am. I thank you for telling me all the time. I was getting mad at you and I didn't have the right to do so. I love you, Roma. Please forgive me. He was flirting with other women. You have every right to be mad at him. Romano hid his red face on the taller man's chest and murmured, I love you too. Romano felt joy at the words. He had to hear them again. Say it again, Roma. I won't do such a thing, you idiot. Now let me go. Just one more time, please. No, get off me. Antonio didn't give up and kissed the Italian sensually. The boy was fighting bad first, but he soon continued the kiss. They parted. Fine. I don't feel bastard. You happy? As long as I'm with you, always, Romano, always. They kissed again. Um, I was also wondering if you would like to go and celebrate at your triumph. Romano had never felt happier, but he won't let the stupid Spaniard see how much he wanted to go with him. I have no choice, idiot. I'm sure everybody has gone to celebrate elsewhere. Bad liar, Antonio thought, and put an arm around the Italian's waist, and this time Romano didn't complain until... By the way, you look damn hot with your shirt off. I hope I get to see you more often like that. Romano gave him a glare as he punched him in the arm. Stupid pervert. Hey, Lord, I'm home. Did you get my mess? Gilbert stood still on the front door of the apartment when he saw Francis and Ludwig sitting on the couch and his grandfather Gerhard sitting in front of them. Gilbert forced a smile. But hello, old man. What a surprise. Gerhard gave his grandson a glare. Oh, he's going to the beach, too. And there's going to be some Germania and Rome shipping. A surprise. I called you a couple of weeks ago, telling you I was coming. Gilbert tried to remember, then recalled one day being still half asleep at 11 a.m. because of an amazing party he had attend with Antonio and Fonsis and answering a call from Gerhard. That time he thought it was a dream. Cruel reality was being bad on him again. Fonsis was suppressing his laugh as he as well remembered the situation and Ludwig was looking extremely mad at him. Gerhard talked again. You didn't forget about it, did you? Gilbert never succeeded in hiding things from either Ludwig or Gerhard. 
but he still tried every time, hoping to make them believe him someday. Hey, Nod, man. Watch your language, boy. I have told you not to call me that. Oh, come on. Don't be so vain, man. You still look as if you are our older brother. Gerhard gave a sigh. Anyway, I just stay for a few days. Gilbert panicked. You mean this weekend? Of course this weekend, Gilbert. I just said so. The dream of an amazing time on the beach was vanishing from Gilbert's mind. Ludwig, on the other hand, saw this as the perfect chance to arrange things. You came at a great moment. What? Gerhard gave a confused look to his younger grandson. Gilbert and Francis doing the same. Because we... Francis and Gilbert made gestures to Ludwig to shut up. They still held the hope of going on to the trip without adult supervision, but Ludwig had something in mind. We are doing a trip to the beach. The other men fall on their places in defeat. And we invited some friends. And? Well, it turns out that grandfather is going too, and he says he's friends with you from a long time. What? Gerhard raised his voice. He was... Even he won't admit it. Kind of an hermit. Not that he disliked being alone, after all. He was always busy with work. Who was this man he simply couldn't recall unless it was? Please don't tell me this is Arsenius Vargas. Ludwig didn't expect this reaction. Actually, it is him. That Arschloch. The younger man looked at Gerhard in surprise. He rarely talked like that. Just when he was really mad. That's why Gilbert really used to the side of his grandfather. He then explained, Yes, we known each other since we were young, and we are still in contact. A few weeks ago, I mentioned him. I was going to visit my grandsons. I guess he already met you at that time, and he didn't mention it. I thought he was still in Italy. Gilbert pulled his brother close to him and talked in his ear. Well done, dude. I think he won't even want to see the man, so we're saved. Ludwig shrugged his brother off. It was he who didn't told him about their grandpa coming, but then he also considered he almost ruined the vacations with Arsenius inviting himself to the trip. Fine, then I'll go with you, the trio shouted. What? He's been asking me to meet him again for years, and I'm sure he panned this to happen, so I shouldn't postpone it any longer. Oh, and boys, there's one more thing I must tell you. The Germans stood up in their places. Yes, yes Vater? Vater? Gerhard gave them a serious look. I don't know why you invited this people, but I don't want you to get involved much with that family. It's for your own good. Oh, the forbidden love. Francis and Gilbert look back at Ludwig, who was totally frozen. Yes, sir. End of chapter 13.